How's it going everybody? Welcome back to K6 Outdoors, or if this is your first time stopping in, welcome. We are going to be taking a look at something that many of us experience and wonder what's wrong, what could possibly go wrong. It wasn't all that long ago, a little over a year ago, I picked up my Mahindra Max 26 XLT. Super excited to get it home, had some projects planned, and the first thing I did, go to my local home improvement store, pick up a bunch of retaining wall blocks up to come home and do a bunch of projects. I loaded all this stuff onto a pallet to bring it home and offload it with the tractor, and I had it stacked in increments that I thought the tractor would handle. Little did I know, when I got home, the tractor wasn't up to the task. And again, we're not gonna get into the physics of, in this instance, I was using pallet forks and how pallet forks drastically reduce your lift capacity, especially when it's out in front of the pivot pins as far as it is. This Mahindra Max 26 XLT is rated at 1,400 pounds, just a hair over at the pivot pins to full height. Which again, I understand pallet forks affect that substantially. And like I just mentioned, something didn't seem right. So I hopped on the interweb to the new phase, or I should say the new world of blogs or forums, whatever you want to call them, Facebook. And started looking out in the various groups to see what could be the problem. Is anybody else experiencing the same issue? And very quickly it became very evident that this issue of not lifting what it's supposed to, or at least the tractor lifting wasn't an issue. After doing a little research and understanding and reaching out to a few folks and um, that had similar models to a tractor like mine to understand what could possibly be wrong, they gave me a couple solutions I could try. And before I go too much further, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I am not a hydraulics master. I am not a diesel mechanic. Um, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I'm a doer of a lot of things, a master of none. Um, but I, I, I do a lot of research to understand what's really going on and what's wrong in the situation. One of the first things I checked was my hydraulic fluid level. Sometimes having too low of a fluid level can cause issues and um, not allow your system to build high enough pressure that it should. Again, that wasn't my problem, but that's one of the first things you can check. I should also say what I'm about to show you may not impact all tractors and some of them may not have this option. This is something easily you can try and is cheap in the world of checking and, and fixing things. So the second thing I did was contacted my dealer to see, have you guys had this same issue before? No one's really reported it, they said, but I let them know what was going on, a couple of my symptoms. Some of the symptoms I had with my tractor was, for one, like I said, it didn't feel like I could lift as much as it could. I mean, I was only had a couple hundred, three, four hundred pounds in the pallet forks and I couldn't even get off a trailer that's, you know, two feet off the ground. The second thing I noticed was in four wheel drive and in low gear, I couldn't spin the tires. I mean, loose gravel and dirt, both the same. It was basically just, you could hear the system bypassing or something just wasn't quite right. So I gave the dealer my feedback to see what was going on and said, hey, maybe my hydraulic pressure is low. Again, based upon some of the conversations I've had and research I'd done, hydraulic pressure is the, well, is, is what makes your tractor run. Whether it be the, in this situation, this is a hydrostatic tractor, HST transmission, it requires hydraulic pressure to run the transmission and as well as, again, like I said, the various implements, like in this instance, a loader. So long story short, my issue on my tractor was hydraulic pressure. Again, the other quick and easy thing to check is your fluid levels. If it's none of one of these two, either it's hydrostatic pressure or hydraulic fluid levels, you may have a couple of other problems, whether something's plugged up, um, maybe the pump's not working, the, not working correctly, which again would show you probably in your hydraulic pressure, or maybe you need to add a shim to the pressure relief valve in your, in your spool there on your loader valve, or whether it may be. They're located in different spots on tractors. Again, this is not a cover all, cure all for all tractors. This is how mine got fixed. This is some stuff you could look for and you may be able to apply it in your situation to your tractor because I'm guessing they're built very similar, right? It's just a matter of where these pieces are located and how you check it. So I thought I would take some time and share with you guys how I can check mine and how I double check. I picked up this whole setup on Amazon. Again, I picked up this oil filled um, pressure gauge. Uh, I'll put all the links to this stuff below for my Amazon affiliate account. Um, just remember if you guys buy anything, I do get a little bit of a kickback, but it's of no expense to you and it's something that Amazon pays out as part of their price to sell goods. I had to pick up a 3 8 to quarter inch NPT reducer so I could connect the 
um, fitting to the pressure gauge, and then I had to get a fitting. And it, keep in mind, every tractor is a little different. I had to do a little, quite a bit of research because there's a lot of different profiles and a lot of different ones for different tractors. So if you look at your tractor, again, over here on the right side, the 26 XLT, they have the loader spool up here or the spool system for the hydraulics here. And then it has a handle that runs over here to run the hydraulics. If you look at one of these lines, there will be coating and or sizes on these fittings to tell you what they are. Um, again, this is how mine's set up. But from doing a little research and understanding, from what I can tell, these hydraulic cylinders are rated to around 2,500 PSI. Again, don't be jacking this up on the hydraulic pressure if you're worried about warranty and voiding warranties, because that's the first thing you're going to do is say you tampered with it, your problem. Um, obviously, damaging bending things is not a good thing you want to do either. So what you can do to check this, get the hydraulic setup you need, and then install it on your tractor. So what you do on this one is I'm gonna go ahead and take off this front one. They're color coded to each cylinder on the tractor so you'll know. But I do know this front one is for my uh, dump function on my loader. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. Again, um, make sure when you're doing this, you keep all the fittings clean. Um, you don't want dirt getting inside the hydraulic system. That's gonna have problems. So taking that off, I'm gonna go ahead and put this new gauge I got on here. Like so. Some other people do use longer extension hoses on this, depends on your application. I could have it here too, but I really didn't see the need to spend another $16 on a 16 inch section of hose. I really didn't need. If it was a tighter spot, I might consider it. If you give me a take a gander with me, you'll see right here there is a nut and a set screw. And mine is almost twisted all the way in. Again, you'll see right here a nut and a set screw. And like I said, mine's almost all the way in. So they could adjust the pressure as high as they could. If that didn't work, I believe from my understanding you can back this system out here and add some spacers to increase the pressure relief. You can back that off while holding the set screw, turn it in a few turns, and then you know, a turn and a half, tighten it down, and check again the hydraulic pressure and see what happens. It's a quick, easy trial, and with this gauge set up, it gets you there pretty quick. This next piece here, don't go saying, oh, Kyle from K6 Outdoors said I could do this. No, 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 that's not how this works. I'm just showing you guys a way you could fix a problem, and if you choose to do it, you're doing it at your own risk. Again, this is all by you. This piece can affect your warranty. I'm just showing you guys a way you could fix a problem, and if you choose to do it, you're doing it at your own risk. Again, this is all by you. So that set screw I showed you, oops, would have been a surprise. That set screw I showed you on this specific one in lock washer, all it's doing is putting more tension on this spring, which is basically making the tractor take more to bypass the system and therefore increasing hydraulic pressure. Another way you can fix this, if this doesn't have enough travel and you can't get it to work, again, almost all these hydraulic tractors, I'm gonna say all of them. I know for sure Kubota does this, I know that I've seen it on some Coyote tractors. I mean, again, if it's got a hydraulic system, it's got adjustment. Take this off, this just unscrews out of that, of that uh, spool block. And inside of it, be careful. Some of these tractors may have shims in them already. And if you want to increase that, be careful. And you can dump this out so you do not make sure there's not any shims in it. Mine doesn't have any shims. It's just the spring in there. So this is what's controlling that pressure. If you want to increase that pressure more, again, heed what you're doing. I'm not doing it on mine. Mine's under warranty. All you do is put some shims down inside here. It's kind of hard to see. You just buy some shim washers. And each shim washer will increase that pressure. One thing you can do if you need to increase more pressure above the 2100, again, these, a lot of these tractor cylinders, the, the seals are rated up to 2500 PSI. Don't quote me on that based upon readings I've done. I get outside warranty. I might start doing some of these mods myself because I don't want to deal with fixing things. My tractor works just fine 99% of the time. But you can add some shim washers down inside here to increase that tension more and again make it take longer to bypass increasing hydraulic pressure and overall system performance with your hydraulics.
However, if you do do this, and again, this is that piece I just took out and put back in. Before you thread it back in, make sure you turn that set screw down. Um, so that way you can get it back in. Also, that way you can creep up on your hydraulic pressure. Because those washers will increase that pressure quite a bit. Well, I hope you guys found this quick tip. Well, two tips really informing. And maybe it'll benefit you as well. Again, check the hydraulic fluid to start with. That's usually not going to be the problem. But if it's low, it's going to significantly reduce your, your uh, pressures. And because it'll have enough pressure to build because it'll have enough fluid. Um, and again, if something's small and enlarged in the system, what we're doing here is not going to fix it. This is just intended to be a quick thing you could check, uh, low cost, without having to take it to a dealer um, and, and go from there, right? Checking this pressure is really easy to do. Again, all you're doing is deadheading the pump. It gets a pressure gauge to see what it's at. And right now, that's, I was at 2,000 RPM. I'm seeing around 2,100 and 2,150 PSI, which is what the, the book says it should be at to get the specs we need for the tractor. Keep in mind, pallet forks drastically reduce your lift capacity, and if that's what you're using and trying to gauge it against, it's not going to be it. Tractors are rated at the pivot pins and not three foot in front of the bucket. So every foot you're out in front of that bucket, it's going to drastically reduce that lift capacity. Sorry if this is info you already knew and something you already tried, but I know there's a lot of people out there concerned about their capacities. If for about 40 bucks, you can test this yourself. Again, I'll put down below in the description the uh, specific hydraulic fittings that I use for this tractor. Pay special attention to the profile of this. Um, again, I'll, for this one, I'll put it down below. I also put a link to Ken's bolt-on hook stuff. They have a whole good hydraulic section there. You can buy a pre-built from them. It's like 50 bucks to set up, or you can save yourself 15 bucks and get this bought on Amazon, put together yourself. And if something's wrong, you return it quick and they'll send you new. Let me know what you guys thought of today's video. Leave me some comments down here below. Thumbs up if you liked it, if it helped you. Thumbs down if, well, thumbs down is better than nothing at all. Again, the constructive feedback is always good. This is not, again, to reiterate again, this is not a fi fix-all, cure-all, it's not going to fix all tractors, but I do know this is an issue, and I do know people have been doing this to fix their tractors, and again, hydraulic pressure drives the tractor. If it's low, there's going to be all sorts of problems. You have to keep in mind, they're not bulldozers. This little max is what it is, and the front curl cylinders, you know, it could be a size up bigger, but it does just a fine job for what I want to do. If I wanted something stronger, I'd be buying a skid loader or a backhoe or something like that. Thanks again for stopping in today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Kyle, and I'll catch you on the next one.